Hello everybody, and welcome to this video where we go over VBOs. By the end of this video, we're going to have a lovely VBO, and we're also going to have this VBO textured. So, what is a VBO? It's a simple way of rendering things practically. It's more efficient too because we're not passing in these datas every time we're drawing something. Instead, we pass it in once and then we can draw it as many times as we want without passing this bulk of data all of the time. So, to get started, I am going to comment this out for now. We may actually end up deleting this at the end of the video. So I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to call it model. Model is going to have two variables inside and it's going to have an integer of draw count and an integer of the vertex ID. The reason why I have a prefix for this is because you could have five different IDs. One for the vertex, the texture coordinates, the normal values, the indices and tangents and it you could have it all in one ID but it's more easier to have them all separated. So the parameters we're going to take in would be a float array of, let's go with vertices. So, in order to start this, we'll have draw count equal to the length of vertices. And before we can actually do anything else, we must import static org lwjgl opengl and we're going to import gl 1.1 and we're going to import gl 1.5 so after we do this vid will equal to gl gen buffers we're basically generating an id for this variable here so you can use it anytime and we're going to be using this right now to put in the data onto the buffer and to bind the buffer all we have to do is gl bind buffer and the buffer we're going to be binding this to is the gl array buffer and of course our vid so we're binding our vid variable to the gl array buffer. Now what we have to do is pass in our data onto this buffer. So we'll do gl buffer data. And what's the target? Well, that's going to be gl array buffer. That's why we binded the vid to GL array buffer. I'll go over data next. So the usage, there's two different types. There's a static and then there's dynamic. Static is generally used for passing in the very the data once, and then you can use it as much as you like. Where dynamic, it means it's going to be changing. So you're going to have a specific data, but you're going to have to change it later on. So for the general purposes of this tutorial, we'll go with static and then draw. There's other types. There's static read, static write. We're just going to go with static draw. Okay, so back onto the data. OpenGL is expecting a float buffer, a byte buffer, or a double buffer from us. 
we're going to give it a float buffer. So I am going to create a float buffer. And this is going to equal to buffer utils create float buffer with vertices dot length. All right. And all we have to do now is add in vertices into our buffer here by doing buffer dot put vertices and make sure to flip the buffer as well. Oh, this should also be uh, divided by three. Sorry about that. And that should be it. Now we can pass in buffer. And that's it for that. So just to be a little on the safe side, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it here and change VID to zero. That means we're unbinding our VID from GL array buffer. So nothing can affect it. Now we're going to have a public void render method. This render method is going to draw our VBO, of course, but this is also where the draw count variable comes in use. So before we can actually start rendering, we have to enable and disable stuff. Well, by stuff, I only mean like one specific variable of OpenGL, and that's the GL vertex array. We have to enable this for OpenGL to recognize, hey, we need to draw this. And then you got to disable it because it could cause some weird effects. So let's enable the client state of GL vertex array. So make sure you copy this, paste it, and change enable to disable. Now within the middle of this, we can get on to the draw code. All we have to do is we got to bind the buffer back to GL array buffer. And we'll use our VID here. Now, OpenGL does not know what to do with our data. So we must tell it what to do. We can tell it what to do with these ver with these data with GL vertex position or not position pointer and what's the size you could do two for x and y or you can do three for x y and z which is what i'm going for right now if you were to do only x and y go ahead and change divided by three to divided by two other than that we're sticking with having z now the type is what we've used. If you're using a double, you're generally going to want to go with GL double. But since we're using a float, we're going to go with GL float. Now, we're not going to be using stride or pointers, so go ahead and leave those at zero. Now, here comes the easy part. This is the hardest thing you can do. Really, it's just GL draw arrays, GL triangles, because we're going to be drawing triangles. The first is going to be zero, and count is going to be draw count. Wasn't that hard? Okay, now we got to unbind the buffer. So I'm going to copy this, paste it, and change VID to zero. So there we have unbinded the GL array buffer. Okay, so now that we have this done, I'm going to comment out the textures for now. And I'm going to create a float array of vertices equal to a new float array 
and then we'll have our triangle here. So for the first vertices, I'm going to put in parentheses just for organization purposes. We'll do negative one for the X, negative one for the Y, and zero. Make sure you, we're going to continue using these, but we'll have to delete them right after. And so for the next X, we'll do zero and then positive one and then zero. And then for the last vertex, we'll use a positive one, negative one and zero. Now that you have everything done and organized, go ahead and delete your parentheses. So now we have all of the data for our vertices. Now we can create our model. So I'm going to create a new model and we're going to pass in vertices. And now the only thing that's left to do is to do model.render. So now if we run our application, we should have our triangle. So let's go ahead and turn this triangle into a quad. It's not as simple as last time where we give it four vertex. We give it four vertices. It's not like that. We have to give it six vertices now. So I'm going to get rid of these and I'm going to start with the top left. So that'll be negative 0.5 F 0.5 F and 0 top left. Now we'll go on with the top right and that'll be just 0 0.5 F 0 0.5 F and 0 top right. And now let's go with the bottom right which will be 0 0.5 F negative 0 0.5 F and 0. Now it'll be bottom right. So we got our first triangle here and that renders this part of our quad. So in order to have the other side of the quad, let's go right ahead and add in that specific vertice. So let's do 0 0.5 F negative 0 0.5 F and zero. That should give us the bottom left of our quad. So in order to get the right values, all we have to do is copy the bottom right, paste it above bottom left here, and then copy top left and paste it under bottom left. And this should create the other triangle for us to use to create our quad. Now let's go ahead and add texture to this. Now that we have finished everything that we need for the model to work, let's get textures going in. So first I'm just going to create the float texture real fast. The array of textures. And since it's top left, we're going to start with zero, zero, top right, one, zero, and then bottom right, one, one. We're going to start off with bottom right again, which will be one, one, bottom left will be zero, one, and then top left will be zero, zero. Now that we finish this, we can implement the texture coordinates within our model class. So it's the same principle as having the VID, except we're going to create another private int and we're going to have it as TID for texture ID. I am actually going to put this into another class since it'll be more simpler. So I'm just going to cut that. What I just cut up here, the buffer and I'm going to create a new private float buffer create buffer and this is going to take in float 
array of data. So I'm going to paste that there, and I'm going to return the buffer. Go ahead and copy data and paste it where it needs to be pasted. So go ahead and come back up to the constructor and change buffer to create buffer vertices. And let's go ahead and add another parameter into our model. We'll do float texture. No, I think I'm going to go with text underscore chords. All right, now all we have to do is we can actually just put this stuff above this unbind method here. I'm going to copy that for the time being. So TID is going to equal GL gen buffers like last time. And that's what we're going to bind on this. So I just copied this and pasted it and it's going to be another GL array. And this is going to have our texture ID here. And of course, it's going to be GL buffer data, the array buffer, and create buffer with our text chords. And then last but not least, static draw. GL static draw. Okay, now we have our texture data inside of our graphics card, but we're not using it yet. In order to use it, come down into this area, copy, not copy the bind buffer, and go ahead and paste it here under the vertex, and change, change it to TID. And just under that, we'll do GL texture or no text chord pointer sorry and then gl array buffer sorry 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 if you knew that it was part of the vertex core or the vertex pointer you would have been confused right there but it would be two because we only have two coordinates for our float buffer of the texture coordinates and now comes the type again we're using floats so we're going to be using gl float and go ahead and set the last two variables to zero now this would render but we're forgetting one more thing we can go ahead copy enable client state paste another one and change vertex to texture chords or texture chord array. I'm going to copy this and paste it down below and change enable to disable. Now that we're actually using our texture chords now, we can go ahead and pass that into the model, pass in texture. And now I'm going to uncomment our texture stuff. Save and run. And we have what we started with before, except now it's more faster because we're not passing it through every frame. We only passed it once and we're drawing it with every frame. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And next time, we'll go over indices. That'll make a lot more memory efficient uh, drawing stuff, drawing calls. We don't need to add any more vertices and we can just use indices. And you know, I think I'll just explain it more in the next video. See you in the next video.